today every five minutes an idea forge drone takes off in India. In one article that came out probably in early 2009 or something about the flying of drones that we used to do in the campus, it reached Raju Hirani and we were a part of the movie Three Idiots. You don't do IP because you want to do IP. You do IP because you want to push the boundaries. Long term value uh, is always more essential. It's in fact one of our values, which is stay the distance. Ankita, I'm feeling very proud sitting uh, across and uh, I chased you for this interview <laughs> uh, because uh, with Idea Forge, uh, I feel that we have a very phenomenal story from India and for India because uh, uh, tracking startup space in the last 15 years to me, the outcome that you've created and of course, I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, things and more outcomes which we will discuss but the outcome that you've created with Idea Forge I was watching the name of private limited se, ab limited ho gaya. and what a phenomenal uh, IPO that you did I think in some way has created a benchmark in the country for hardware, for uh, you know, doing different. Let's begin with the idea for the story. For us, it was a passion that began all the way in college. We used to do a lot of tinkering around in the college. Uh, at IIT Bombay, uh, our alma mater was very supportive of any ideas that we would have by default. So we would essentially come up with random ideas, crazy ideas, and we would go to our faculty or we'll go to this innovation cell that I used to also lead as a student uh -huh. called the Umesh Mashruwala Innovation Cell, called UMIC. So we used to take our ideas and then they would be very happy to uh, fund it from institute's resources or whatever the fund's resources were, the innovation cell resources. So one, of, one such idea was uh, mooted by actually my uh, co-founder Rahul Singh. Hmm. Uh, after one of the sessions that I took to encourage people to come up with crazy ideas, huh. uh, he came up and he said that I want to make a hovercraft and float it in the Pawai Lake next to our campus. Okay. Hmm. And uh, when he said that, he had also made this very elaborate and very cute plan that we'll go, we'll uh, scavenge engines from the leftover bikes that our seniors have left behind in campus and they were all sort of sitting in a graveyard next to our main gate at IIT Bombay and yeah. we'll like he will middle of the night we'll get them <laughs> and we'll fix one of those and we'll make a hovercraft and we'll probably hover around on the Pawai Lake. So that was the origin of how we were introduced to aerial robotics. Mm. We had never thought of building a hovering platform. Uske pehle, there was a lot of craze on movie, making drones or robots that could move on ground. Three, this four. is 2004. Four. Early mm. 2004. Very so. early. Very, yeah, very early. Very early. And yes. you guys were thinking that means way, way ahead. Because drones ka conversation to ab mujhe lagta hai, pichle kuch saalon se shuru hai. We had also not heard, right? And uh, so, wanting to build a hovercraft, me, Rahul, we sat down in a lab that I used to be host housing being housed at by my faculty and we made a bunch of prototypes in one afternoon and we realized that we may not be able to file a patent on this and the concept of getting capital from the innovation cell was that can you file a patent on mm. that technology. So we realized that this is not innovative enough, we need to think of something innovative. Then we decided that instead of hovercraft, we will try and make something that can hover in the air. <laughs> but there were helicopters, dime a dozen available, particularly in the hobby space market, yeah. if you know hobby flying. So that also wasn't really a useful idea. So we sort of, you can say, the idea kept simmering in our mind for a while. And in about six months time, we came up with the concept of these four rotors, which will counter rotate with respect to each other and be able to create a very, very stable flight, like a helicopter, but less mechanically complex. So that's when we independently came up with that idea. We thought we've changed the aviation industry, not knowing that it was probably changed 60 years back. <laughs> but at that time, what used to happen was that uh, you would first build something and then think of protecting it mm. as a patent. So we went ahead thinking that we've done something really extraordinary and we built our first prototype in 2004. But uh, when we went to patent it, of course, we realized that there is no way we can patent it. But we got hooked onto the idea of building aerial robots. And it was not something very common even in those days. So we started building more versions of our prototype. 2005, again, we built another version. Then when I 
graduated from IIT Bombay and I studied for another six months. My core technical team of myself, Rahul and Ashish, the three of us were essentially a team that we had formed in IIT and in Rahul and Ashish, I had met first time two people who were as passionate about building hardware as anybody else that I had ever found. When I graduated in 2005, I knew that I don't have too much time and I spent six months earning enough that I could survive the next six and I quit my job and I came back. Rahul and Ashish, my two co-founders, were still students at IIT Bombay. They were graduating in 2006. So there is that junior to you. Two batches. So that's how the journey of the team getting together came. And then our uh, fourth uh, friend, partner, Vipul came on board in 2008 when we actually registered the company in seven. And then Vipul came in 2008 and Vipul actually is my childhood friend. You know, a lot of people and a lot of and, and, and many listening would agree with me in college we experiment no in college we think chalo hardware karte hain robotics ban, robots banate hain ye sab karte hain but then the life once you are graduating life hits you if you had to tell the decision which you took and your uh, uh, co-founders what propelled you to stay on the you know because bahut, you know many people don't yeah, no, I agree with you. So, like I said, people would stay up all night if they have to build a software, but nobody would do that for anything hardware. Right? Yeah. That was my experience hardware for the first hard. two, three years. <laughs> hardware is really hard. And, it, and good part about engineering is it teaches you that nothing works right the first time. I have never seen anything work right. Even code you write doesn't work right the first time. You have to debug and you have to stay at it and make it happen. I actually took up mechanical engineering also because I was passionate about it. Okay. And that As a kid, I used to get a lot of ideas. I would go to my teachers and I would tell them that, you know, I draw these perpetual motion machines and then I'll go to them and I'll show them, ki, you know, will this work? And they would be very kind and say that this won't work, but please keep thinking this way. Wow. I right? mean that this is in Jodhpur. This is in Jodhpur. Hmm. So I was, uh, I always knew that I want to go to a place where I can implement these ideas. And that's how engineering came to my life. And then I overheard my family once speak that IITs are the best engineering colleges. So. I also decided ki chalo, I'll also try and get into <laughs> IITs, right? Huh. So I was fortunate I got in. And once I did, I wanted to implement my idea. I remember the first idea that I had implemented was uh, on a train journey back in my first year summer vacations. I was, uh, you know, move, going in the train and I realized that the sound when the train moves on a bridge is very loud mm -hmm. as compared to the train moving mm -hmm. on the ground, right? So I felt like there is something happening that just the fact that the train is moving on a flat road, it is still losing a lot of energy to the ground. Right? Why is that happening? I got quite intrigued by that. So I thought ki maybe there is a way in which I can tap that energy that is being lost by a moving vehicle and uh, build a device that can be embedded in the roads. It won't change anything for the car, but it still generate energy. Wo banaya. Then I remember I showcased that device to our uh, honorable uh, president Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Oh, when was that? This was during the Tech Fest Open Hardware. So I sort of given an entry in Open Hardware and you know I put my display there and he came, visited us and had a chat with what the idea was. So I had that experience and I was like really keen on solving real world problems as many as I could. So that's what I did throughout my time at IIT. I probably personally would have built more than 20 hardware projects and as, as a student. And your parents were supportive projects. about all this? Till IIT, there was nothing to be worried about. Right? Haan, Anyways, I was not seeking any money from my parents. My institute had enough money to invest behind our ideas. Yeah. Yeah. So when I found Rahul and Ashish, uh, I realized that I won't have this team ever again. If I skip on doing something together with the team today, I won't have anything. I had implemented seven or eight of my own original ideas. And then I had filed a patent also on one of my ideas. I was never really excited about computer science. I was never really excited about <laughs> You know, it's such a refreshing thing. I'm meeting after a long time someone who's not <laughs> excited about computer science. I mean, it's a means to an end, but I really wanted to build real things, right? physical things, mobile robots, all of that was something really exciting. And Rahul and Ashish were equally or maybe more passionate than I remember there was this competition where the first time we participated, we did not, I did not sleep for three days on trot just to fix everything. <laughs> then the next time me and Ashish were together in that competition and we did not sleep for five nights on top. Wow. We were just fixing the bots that we had built. So that's the passion that we and the team brought together. The other thing was we really felt privileged. When we participated in these competitions, right? Mm. 
I would see the behavioral difference in IIT Bombay's approach towards the money that they had invested in our ideas versus yeah. any other institutions investment in uh, you mm. know their colleges teams ideas so yeah. if any other college would be participating their faculty would be like really involved in making things happen here our faculty was not bothered like they never even came except for the last day professor amarnath who was our mentor at that time he said something really amazing to me that time mm. that ankit i can strip away all the awards from you but nobody can strip your experience away and that's yeah. what we are going for and it was such a he was your professor yeah he was our professor in charge he was actually the one who used to lead the innovation cell at that time ha huh. then actually he ended up leading the incubator as well he was the professor in charge for sign iit bombay hmm. and we got incubated at sign hmm. so i used to feel really privileged you know so what i'm also hearing from you ankit is that ek uh, पैशन ब्लड में तो था ही सबके मतलब ऑल ऑफ यू फ्रॉम वेरी वेरी अर्ली चाइल्ड हुड डेज एंड यू मेट अब्दुल कलाम एंड 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 बिसाइड्स दैट देर वॉज ऑल्सो द अंडरस्टैंडिंग द अवेयरनेस ऑफ द अपॉर्चुनिटी दैट वॉज देयर एंड यू वर नॉट लेटिंग इट गो वेस्ट विच मेनी ऑफ अस डू इन कॉलेज द थिंग इज दैट द वे आई वुड हैंडल एन आइडिया वुड बी आई वुड अलाउ इट टू वॉश ओवर मी फॉर सम टाइम and it would consume me rather than me consuming the idea and mm. when you live in the potential of an idea uh, you don't want to waste that potential yeah. if you can do something about it yeah. we had the opportunity to do a lot although i did not sit for placements i had to get a job because there was no funding at that time when i graduated and without funding i couldn't have done anything joined on 8th of august in my job and i quit on 8th of feb like mm. six months dot and then i ended up uh, surprisingly actually we ended up getting the registration certificate for idea forge on 8th of feb the next year how did you think about money because many i and why i am asking many people will not pursue this just because of money also see like i said personally i had kept my needs very very low huh. so i did not believe that i need a lot to survive and it wasn't like i was uncomfortable with that like there wasn't an aspiration ki ni nikalte hi gaadi honi chahiye ghar hona chahiye I never had that aspiration. I did not cultivate because, for me, those ideas and what I do with them was more critical uh, than you know having any material. I would rather invest in my idea than invest in these ideas. So I was very clear in my second year onwards that I want to focus on three things in IIT. I will get good enough grades that I will get at least foot in the door in every opportunity that is there. Second, I will pursue technology and ideas that I have, and the third was I will play. <laughs> I'll play for the college as much as I can, or can. so these are the only three things I pursued for the three remaining years of my. So I was that way is very clear that I have to do what I have to do and why I am doing it. Because I wanted to give myself a shot by the time I graduated that I can do something about these things on my own. So, you know, but it's very refreshing to meet someone who has clarity, who had clarity, and it's very important again to call this out because if there is clarity, then you have to pursue it for so many years. and sometimes when you pursue what you believe in then the outcome is what you have created yeah no i, I agree with you and the reason why i arrived at that conclusion as well for myself is uh, i remember that uh, when i first came to iit bombay there was this moment where maybe i i felt that i was less than adequate as compared to some other far more accomplished people and oh, tell us tell IITs, us about it <laughs> that's what iits do right they are putting you in with a lot of people who are significantly more brilliant than you are and they do something so well that it's not even like imaginable for you to get there and that moment was a uh, it's a very taxi moment for me like at that that moment i remember that day very clearly i felt very inadequate and i said that no i can't live with this feeling right so i had to get out of that feeling what do i do so i took a walk with myself i spent 3 4 hours wow. around walking around the campus all by myself trying to understand why am i feeling what i'm feeling and to what do i do from here on out right so the conclusions are arrived, arrived at at the end of that time was two things right first was that success as we perceive it right commercially or externally has no timeline right there are people like van gogh who died penniless but their paintings are sold today for millions of dollars yes right? and then there are people who get nobel prizes at the end of their career yes they probably don't get it at the very early days and then there are people who get successful right become unicorn in two months i obviously that was not the concept but then you had enough examples to say that you can get success at any point in time in your life 
the second thing was that there is no guarantee of that sustained success because even if you get success very early in your life yes you know, well recognized there is no guarantee that that will sustain all through your life right there were enough examples of that as well so the only thing that i felt was consistent <laughs> in all successful people's journey who were successful when they left this world was that they did what they loved doing for a really long period of time and i think that sort of made me feel very very uh, you know comfortable that you know all i can do and control is the fact that i should do what i love doing for a very long period of time to be successful or just to be at peace with anything that we do we need to have a very clear inner compass in terms of what things mean to us and how we operate and i think you had i'm very impressed <laughs> that you had it from very early on and yeah. somewhere you reflected you were a reflective guy yeah so that helped me a lot right that really helped me chart out the the kind of journey i wanted and, and it was a deliberate journey it wasn't like an accidental journey so uh, really these these ideas really helped me stay the course for the many years that we have spent at idea forge and idea forge has probably gone through trouble times more trouble times than anybody in the last uh, you know anybody should be in the last many years that we were around we've been around but i think the only thought and uh, feeling we had as a team was that if we can survive this then what kind of steel will we be yeah i think that was the only thought that kept us going that you know who will we be if we survive this also yeah and that kept us going so that's something which uh, you know i i take a lot of uh, heart in that uh, you know it, it's not as material uh, in terms of where you are at a given moment but it's really important to be comfortable about it so that you don't do wrong things desperate things and to find a way or to get demotivated the right because the journey has not been like a one year two year journey for you also sab keh rahe the dekho idea forge ka listing acha hua hai dekho idea forge aur look kare ki company kaun hai ye kya hai and what is this <laughs> because it was not that you were the poster boys of the startup world right like and you were always on the front page or people were talking and you were of course i'm sure they would have been recognitions but you 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 understand what i'm saying yeah, and absolutely. then it suddenly came out of nowhere dekho matlab shandar outcome and that is why we are also talking because there's a lot of lesson for thousands we have 120000 startups today i want them to listen to you to say that you know you pursue what you believe in and you create you know what the world would also say financial outcome right like ipo is the benchmark of and we've seen last one year may and of course we can have different points of views but wo outcome idea forge ne create kiya i mean also in a category hardware start <laughs> from india tell us some of the lessons of building this because i still meet a lot of drone startups and i still hear that there is a lot of you know there's still a lot of question that there's not much support for hardware startups in india and it's still very difficult it is difficult i think uh, even when we were uh, on the path of wanting to raise more capital more because we were seeing the growth that's possible in the industry and uh, we had to make a choice of whether we capitalize ourselves today or we wait for a glory day and continue <laughs> to sustain the way we are and we are at a happy place in that broad sense we are making we are making profits and you know things are in the right place but we had to consciously say that okay we should raise capital so that we can build for the next phase of growth in the industry jab shuru kiye 2008 you registered uh, 2007 Seven, you registered. Now you tell me initially, Shuru Karne, four of you came, three of you came first, and uh, and then uh, the Vipul fourth Vipul joined, joined later. Us yeah. samay, if you had to tell me as a drone starter, <laughs> hardware startup, where did the capital come from and the initial yeah, so days? Like I said, I had reserves that could help us survive the first six months. You worked for six months, and then when I quit, actually another friend of mine was doing a. robotics education startup learning startup so mm. he had built a kit that uh, college students could get hands on experience of doing hardware technology mm. like that was his vision so weekdays we used to work for idea I, idea forge and weekends were basically spent earning money so that we could survive oh for his uh, startup for his startup right mm. so i used to myself Rahul Ashish used to go occasionally. They would do it occasionally. I would do it almost every weekend, earn enough money that I could pay rent and food. 
wow. would come to the wow. So that's what that first wow. year's journey was, right? Mm. So you so, were working seven days, literally. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Having a lot of fun also. Yeah. Used to go to like really nice colleges. This was something which was a lot of. Uh, there was labor of love, love, right? Something really wanted to do, and it was again robotics. So it was easy to talk about what we had done when we were students, etc. And I think people learn better from peers. Then, of course, uh, we applied for a grant called the Technopreneur Promotion Program Grant. It I've heard of it. The government used to give about. Now also it exists in a different format, but at that time it used to be called TEP P E P P, and uh, I got about ten lakhs from that. And the business was different. We were working on these uh, hand crank chargers for portable electronics to survive them off grid. So the idea was that uh, can you build a device that can help people sustain their uh, Feature phones huh. off grid because if you remember those days, mobile phones were just starting to penetrate the rural India. Yes, and people were paying ten rupees, twenty rupees to the Kirana store to charge their phones. Yes, some people would plug their phones directly to a lead acid battery to try and charge them. Yes, so a lot of things happened at that yes, time. Yes, so, yes, yes. Uh, we were like, Ki, maybe you know, it's a great idea to build something that can help survive it completely off grid. Huh. So we built these charging devices, and that's what we get got the grant for. So that was one part of the funding. Other was, like I said, this uh, work that we used to do. And then we also, because we had built drones at IIT Bombay, and uh, IIT Bombay was aware of us doing these mm-hmm. experiments, they suggested if we could make these data loggers, the aerospace department, for hobby drones that they used to fly, so that from the data that you log there, we can potentially build an autopilot. So we actually used to take up those projects. We g- built that data logger. Uh, delivered to them, so these like whatever we could get our hands on was our way of surviving. And the reason why we called Idea Forge Idea Forge and not uh, you know something power or something uh, ro- aerial robotics was because we were not very sure at that time ki which idea will we end up uh, scaling Forging. in the future, mm. right? So we wanted to keep it flexible, and we just went back to our own thinking roots that you know what is what do the three of us represent, right? I mean. with basically a bunch of uh, hyperactive people who would not sit with their ideas we if we get an idea we had to build it <laughs> that's what our like craze was right ki agar aaya hai to banana and if you remember like even the famous quote that elon musk has right that ideas are uh, dime a dozen available but execution is yeah, yeah. right so we were quite focused on building and uh, that's why we sort of thought ki yaar ye nahi de sakte ye nahi de sakte to idea forts is a <laughs> and and you won't believe that literally the tagline of create inspire came because of the lack of passion for hardware technology hmm. we felt that if we can do something with what we do as a business maybe it will inspire us to so, 2007 se the ipo tak how did you like tell us the money story along with the drone story right so i mentioned up to that technopreneur promotion program ha huh. after that we got incubated at sign we okay. got a soft loan from sign which was again i think sponsored by the technology development board or dst either of the two ha huh. and then uh, that was the initial journey till 2008 when we got our first seed investment uh, which came from a uh, nri friends that we made eventually <laughs> and they put in money on the chargers business that we had uh, but i think more they put money on the team of course you guys right? and uh, that investment happened we had a small follow on from them in 2009 and then in a way funding dried up for us we raised in between when we got incubated at cii in 2011 We get about twenty-five lakhs. So you have been incubated by all the places. For, uh, Sign for and the, CIE was so do big. Do whatever it takes to survive, right? Mm. I mean, we had to survive somehow or the other. So you moved to Ahmedabad that time. No, no, it was a virtual incubation. Uh-huh. So CIE had a model where they were uh, okay to invest as well. So these small chunks of money were the only equity sources of capital that we could raise from two thousand and nine till two thousand and fifteen. Wow. So we had to survive off our own revenues wow. all this while, and we had to survive off debt, and uh, we would not get formal uh, debt very easily. So we had to survive on the unsecured debt part for a really long period of time. You know, I have so much of respect, <laughs> like, and <laughs> so much of respect because I'm just imagining you. ये time frame लग रहा है दो हजार सात से पंद्रह, but I can imagine what it would have. What it would do, जो steel बनता है ना, वो यहीं पे बना होगा, या, या. So 
the the thing was that we had to build a different business. We had to build a business that could survive off its own products, and therefore we had to build enough technology in the products that it delivers substantial value to our customers, that they are willing to pay the yeah. price for getting that technology, and we are able to build this sustainably. Yeah. In that period, I would say we did not let technology suffer within the confines of what we could do. We did not let our technology suffer, and. this again emanates from an experience we had right so we won a competition in india when we were students and we went to represent india uh, in an international competition when we won the indian competition we won as if nobody can hold our hand and when we went to the international competition we probably uh, were sh- you know our real position showed up uh, with an equally large margin like people out thought out thought us people were more reliable than we were mm. the systems we built were not the global best and i think it seeded for us that mindset that we whatever we build we have to build global best mm. we cannot be local best anymore yeah. and the second thing was that whatever we build has to be reliable it has to survive the vagaries of the real world it cannot be something that just survives in our lab or a small <laughs> environment and it doesn't work after a few tries right? yeah. literally that happened with our machine there one of our machines so that was the you can say the backbone with which we kept building technology in idea forge from the very beginning i think three things that we focused on as far as drones were concerned and even when we were building our chargers performance was very critical for us we mm. wanted to build the best in the world we wanted to build it such that it can survive in the hands of people mm. and we wanted to build in a lot of autonomy because we were actually building it for our jawans so 2008 when the attacks on mumbai happened is when we felt that we were at that time till then we were just more like playing around with the tech we were not really doing the drones tech as a technology piece for us so we felt like we missed an opportunity to serve when the attacks were happening oh, and you had news of the bumps, yeah. naval helicopters <laughs> yeah. were trying to look into the third and fourth floor of the taj hotel yeah. Yeah. we were like yaar ye to drones kar sakte hain like, yeah why why are helicopters need to do this job yeah that's when we decided that we have to take the fun we are having this tech and make it into a product for our forces so autonomy was critical because if you want to give something to a jawan you don't want him to be trained like a hobby flyer you don't expect him to be doing this for fun or focusing on flying is not their job their job is to gain intelligence and how can we focus them towards gaining intelligence rather than uh, yeah doing the flying part of the whole thing so these three pillars of performance reliability and autonomy have been our core focus from the very beginning and whatever we do we try to push our boundaries in that direction some of our platforms today boast of class leading performance globally in in their category of what we put up in the air in terms of the weight uh, there are going to be challenges in finding performances of that same quality there and that's something that we have really built on the level of autonomy that we offer for a pilot really helps them be comfortable when the drone is flying and that becomes very critical because it allows a very high reliability on the platform itself and its ability to continue to do service to the customer and that's the area we track the most and we continue to optimize in the company two fun things um one was that uh, in 2008 we actually helped iit bombay secure pole position in a competition alongside mit us mm. right this is an international competition held by department of defense us and the indian army together in that competition when we held the iit bombay uh, a lot of our labs realized that there is a team in india that can actually build the entire stack themselves and we started getting demand from the labs for our autopilot the brains of the drone and in order to service that demand is when the first time we started to enter the drones domain in that broad sense as a business we delivered to them the world's smallest and lightest autopilot of that time wow in 2008 2008 and 9 time to mit to to indian labs oh indian But lab this competition we helped uh, secure the pole position in was alongside 17 top universities from across the world and it was held in agra by department of defense us and indian army together wow so it was a it was a great moment for us uh, where we realized that okay what we are building is not just you know locally relevant yeah. right because till then we were not really focused on drones as a business so that happened and then in one article that came out probably in early 2009 or something about the flying of drones that we used to do in the campus 
because we were incubated at IIT Bombay itself, right? So, uh, Mumbai Mirror carried an article and somehow uh, it reached Raju Hirani and we were a part of the movie Three Idiots. We were part of Three Idiots? <laughs> so, the drone that you see in the movie mm. is an early prototype of ours. <laughs> <laughs> so, we literally seeded the consciousness of this technology in the public. Wow. Of course, nobody can forget the <laughs> three idiots. Pala, wo last mein jo ek drone bhi aata hai na? They, the, the drone during the mo- uh, the song, where mm-hmm. the culminating scene is where it goes up and sees uh, that the character Joy mm-hmm. commit suicide. That mm-hmm. that whole where Amir Khan is building that drone, that was basically our. In a way, that really helped us because at that time nobody knew drone. Kya of course, karta. but. वो मूवी से सबको लाइक इट जस्ट क्लिक्स इन एवरीवन माइंड क्या कर सकता है ड्रोन काइंड ऑफ थिंग टेल मी हाउ डिड यू स्केल द बिजनेस एंड टेल अस अबाउट बिकॉज़ द मार्केट हैज वैलिडेटेड इट एंड पीपल एंड यू नो द स्टॉक मार्केट इज द बिगेस्ट रूथलेस ऑब्जर्वर ऑफ व्हाट वन हैज बिल्ड द वैल्यू वन हैज क्रिएटेड और कहीं ना कहीं उसमें स्केल और कमर्शलाइजेशन दोनों चीज बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट होती हैं या वी वर मेकिंग रेवेन्यूज एंड वी केप्ट सॉर्ट ऑफ वर्किंग विद द कस्टमर टू इंक्रीज द डेप्थ ऑफ देयर डिप्लॉयमेंट फॉर द टेक्नोलॉजी सो वन ऑफ द थिंग्स वी रियलाइज्ड फ्रॉम द वेरी बिगनिंग वाज दैट अनलेस अ कस्टमर हु इज बाइंग दिस फॉर आइदर अ सिक्योरिटी और अ बिजनेस पर्पस यूजेस द टेक्नोलॉजी दे वुड नॉट बी इंसेंटिवाइज्ड इन बाइंग मोर ऑफ दीस सिस्टम्स एंड स्केल इन देयर डिप्लॉयमेंट इज व्हाट a drone company is looking for right ultimately it can't be that we sold one drone to a police force and that's it yeah like we haven't done our job unless every person in that force is actually using the technology to their effective outcome right so to do that we were very focused with usage of our technology so the metric we track at idea forge is uh, how many flights our customers have done mm. so our customers have done over 375000 operations on our drones by now 375000 operations and wow. these operations have happened across the length and breadth of our country from take off altitude of more than 6000 meters to negative 30 degrees temperature to operating in the deserts at plus 55 degrees to operating in marine environments so that spread of and that experience of operationalizing the technology that it can be a daily use mm. uh, it's not a novelty ki drone hai iske liye yeah that was our focus and that's yeah. what eventually led to many of our customers scaling the use of the technology in their ranks they bought one then they bought multiple then they are wanting to buy much more like now it's getting into hundreds of drones now even thousands of drones are getting inducted it's all happening because those early days mein we were really really keen on proving the capability of the technology and i'll give you some examples like with one customer we gave the drones and they were not using it because why because they were using it like you wear party clothes it was literally like party clothes for them right if a if a vip has come or somebody has come then they will take it out and show that we have technology and then pack it back and <laughs> it because obviously it yeah. was a uh, expensive technology it's well. like the cups we have cutleries in middle class households ki agar koi bahut bada guest aaye to nikalo it was like that <laughs> yes. initially so we went to the customer and we said that what are you afraid of right i mean we are pained that you are not using it is there a way you want you can use it so we said don't worry we will take care of whatever happens to the system just fly mm. and they started flying and we got into a lot of challenges because when you operate is when you learn the most about the technology right and the challenges were very unique right we would fix it and the next day it would go bad somehow right and then the person who was responsible would have to travel all the way to mumbai to uh, you know <clears throat> get it fixed so that incentive of getting out of the field zone was the reason why it was going bad oh so we once we realized that this is the issue we we put a service center right next to the customer suddenly the product was flying like it's nobody's business wow so you have a lot of experiences of what it takes to genuinely operationalize the technology mm. Mm. and from that same customer who is using it like party wear to now many a times if they have a drone they won't go out of their camp unless a drone has done a scan before wow that's the it's a habit now it's a daily thing mm. 
सो वी वर ऑलवेज गनिंग फॉर दैट हैबिट नाउ टुडे एवरी फाइव मिनट्स एंड आइडिया फोर्स ड्रोन टेक्स ऑफ एन एरिया टू डू आई दर अ सर्वेलेंस मिशन और अ मैपिंग मिशन दैट्स अ वेरी वेरी पावरफुल स्टेटिस्टिक्स या या इट्स अ एवरी फाइव मिनट्स वाव यू नो यू यू हैव सेड नो कि जवान और किसान <laughs> with vigyan yes, yes. <laughs> uh, ke liye so tell me because I, i i really want to hear from you on the army usage because it's so important and it's so powerful and of course farmers but the both the segment which yes. is so very essential for us our country so, like i said the reason why we started doing this was because we wanted to help our security forces right yeah. to manage that last the, at the last mile can they find a way of protecting themselves better like that was the motivation with which we started So today the drones are used for counter insurgency in our hinterlands they are used for law enforcement in most police forces they are used for border management and particularly when the pandemic happened and we had the issues at our border on the northern border is when we realized that it is the lack of eyes on the border uh, of mm. a specific kind that information is not available yeah. enough information is not available of what could have been acted upon earlier so that triggered a very different way of induction of the technology till the pandemic happened or that incident happened it was more like a good to have technology now it has become a must have technology and with the war between armenia azerbaijan where for the first time a country had to lay down arms in front of another because of drones particularly yeah that and then the current ongoing russia ukraine war so the role for drones and the technology in our lives has been cemented since the pandemic because pandemic then again created that approach or scenario where nobody wanted to go close to even the enforcement zones if there is a lockdown zone yeah, nobody yeah. physically of wants course, to enforce course, it right yeah. and people would take liberties so how do you find a way of doing it in an unmanned way Imagine. so drones became a use case for that like people and we experimented with drones with megaphones that could literally call out somebody moving on the road who is not supposed to be on the road uh, to try and prevent uh, what an essential off. essential technology so it the color changed yes. completely and then because of the color changing the mindset changing the rules changed in a year from the onset of the pandemic a year and a half we had some of the most progressive rules in the world unlocking the use of the technology in the civil space for us and that's what's getting operationalized today then we add a ban on import of drones then we have opening up of the export policy we have a pli incentive for drones imagine the size of the industry and still having a pli industry associated pli incentive associated so that's what the technology is doing and that's when when i say we are doing it for the jawan and the kisan via vigyan that's what i imply that we're literally helping that population become part of the economic mainstream ankit but abhi hum bahut sun rahe hain ki bahut sare drone startups aa rahe hain unko incentivize karo and 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 get how do you see the space as such the space has a lot of headroom for a lot of people to come in okay uh, the only thing that i uh, you know whenever i am asked this question of what would be my advice my advice would be to look at building something differentiated because doing the same thing is just a race to the bottom it doesn't help anybody or neither the industry right and the customer also does not get innovative capabilities which are essential for the industry today it's not as mature an industry as some of the others where we drop innovation and focus on uh, only looking at uh, you know building basic capabilities our play cannot merely be building to print our play merely cannot be tot and print our play should be building intellectual property out of india yeah and owning that space fully so that we can do whatever we want with that technology yeah for our users and for our availability not be dependent on the rest of the world how are you maintaining that innovation cycle culture it is tough because ultimately what we are doing is we are solving problems yeah and we are trying to make better products every time we Yeah. get a new product or a new capability out there we just trying to solve the problems for the customer the good part about intellectual property is that it need not be a forced affair you don't do 
IP because you, you want to do IP. You do <laughs> IP because you want to push the boundaries. So it's an important point you're making is that IP should be for the sake of innovation, genuine innovation, which can be used rather than collecting IPs and that culture of innovation you're maintaining here. Tell, you know, again, what are two, three things that you're doing ki wo rahe? For us, it is about maximizing, like I mentioned, these three parameters, right? Performance, reliability and autonomy. How do we maximize these three, right? If you're already at the cutting edge there, then the next generation has to do something else that will push the boundary further, right? So that process of pushing the boundary naturally creates intellectual property. You don't have to do something, like I said, specific to say, okay, I'll come up with a differentiated idea for the sake of it. It's just that you encounter a problem in your system or you encounter a boundary that you're not able to breach. Yeah. But you have to build something better. Yeah. So you have to think of something better at that, something new at that point in time. And that's where you dig two layers deeper. And that control and command over the fundamentals of what it takes to build something from scratch is very essential to build intellectual property. You can't build intellectual property easily when your depth of knowledge is very superficial. Of course. <laughs> so you, you literally have to peel enough number of layers to do something better than where the rest of the world has been. Magar, you are doing it phenomenally. Uh, Idea Forge has so many patterns. Uh, again, tell me, how do you maintain that culture of innovation? And especially when you reach a certain milestone, to thoda to wo ho jayega slack, wo dar hai, rehta hai ki slack ho sakta hai. In fact, we are seeing increased momentum now. Wow. Earlier, I used to feel that you know, we have to, as the leaders, hold forth of that aspect. But we are trying to galvanize the rest of the uh, team as well. And we are seeing a lot more. Like I hear from my IP team that uh, there is a lot more. They don't have time to, uh, you know, uh, now they don't get spare time in that one sense. And it's because, also because of a couple of things we've done. We've instituted some intellectual property awards. Mm. Uh, we've also, uh, you know, we start recognizing them in very, very important occasions and events for the company. So that also galvanizes a little bit when you see somebody do it. Uh, and like I said, like motivation and learning a lot of times happens because of good peers. Absolutely. So that's what happens here as well. Like when you have peers who, sometimes people who are not even engineers file patents. Wow. wow. That's what happens here at Idea Force. Like you don't need to be an engineer to file a patent. Any, anybody can come up with a creative idea. And when you recognize people, you then create that atmosphere that this is valuable, this is important. You know, one so, quote I like is what you appreciate, appreciates. <laughs> and I think what you're saying in Idea Forge, you appreciate this, you celebrate this culture yes, of yes. Uh, creating genuine IPs and, and technology and innovation and that permeates in the organization. Okay. So okay. it's a process also. It's a, it's a, I mean, it's institutionalized. Hai kahe to. Fir hum events we run karte ideation camps, events, where people can break away from their day-to-day -day work and think of what they would like to solve. That also happens. Uh, that really helps. 2015 to the IPO. Now let's look at the second leg of the journey. Yeah. Where, where did the capital happen? Where did that scale happen? Again, I'm calling out that the IPO market, the way it has responded, rewarded your team, the ecosystem, it's phenomenal. So, what do you think about it? 22 or 23? We had a capital when we were able to prove that it was a scale. Hmm. So, in 2014 15, we bagged a large, large opportunity from the government of India. And uh, that became the backbone of us getting equity investments again. Till then, it was all dried up. So, when that happened and started to happen, we started to build momentum. We started to build, uh, the opportunity also started to scale a little bit at that time. You understand that this is also a slightly restricted space. One, if you have defense as a customer, it becomes a challenge for many people in their ESG issues. And then the other issue in private capital was the fact that uh, government is a customer was something mm -hmm. that was not very kindly looked upon. Of course. Once the opportunity started to prove itself a little bit, momentum started to gather and we raised our Series A investment from three marquee investors, Celesta Capital, which was the lead investor, Qualcomm and Infosys. When these guys came in, then we got into a phase of building the team uh, 
till then we were focused on executing with whatever team we had with them on board we started building a team as well and that team progressively helped us build a larger opportunity as a business and build better technology as well over a period of time we became more ip conscious ip savvy we started finding a lot of patents and a lot of what we had done started to get into action those were plans that we had held back because we had to survive with the lowest possible so uh, see 2007 to 15 you developed very good habits uh, yes and very yes. frugal so, innovative habits uh, which you scaled then from 2015 yes, onwards yes yes Do you tell us about Celesta Capital? Celesta Capital was the only fund that actually I feel I met and the uh, principals of the fund had experience in building hardware. Yeah, Indian technology. fund hai ye. This is a US based fund, US hmm. India fund in that one sense. Hmm. And these guys had invested in so in their previous aptas or in their sister funds, they had invested in companies like GoPro. Wow. And they literally I think Uh, made 40x return when GoPro went public. <laughs> like they are one of the most successful, and they used to invest in hardware, like deep tech hardware technology. So they found you, you found them. So what happened was that uh, we received an angel investment from uh, one of the persons who eventually became the principal of that fund in India. Wow! And he backed us because he is a successful entrepreneur, and he took real fancy to our story and journey. Till and that's what they were looking for like is there a original ip business and then they believed in india defense story even at that time they believed that the story has to be dealt with from our country and it can't be relying on the rest of the world's technology yeah yeah it. so that's how they got in that broad sense convinced and of course they potentially liked the team because nobody invests unless they like the team so that they came on board qualcom came on board Infosys came on board. Infosys had the innovation fund instituted at that time. But the most important thing for them was that they were partners in the journey. They were not investors trying to maximize their returns. Mm. They were actually people who wanted to build a good business first. Looking at the journey that you've made, I mean, many parts I feel it has also been a very conscious journey, right? Like where you have said no to things, where you yeah. stood your ground, where you not got defocused and you've remained focused to your madness, to your obsession, to your passion of building the right thing. And wo matlab saal bhar saal bhar saal bhar jab paisa nahi dikhta hai, koi bahut taaliyan nahi dikhti hain. To itne saal tak rehna is also in a in a sort of a way it is also a meditation right it is also a prayer one is living which i think idea forge would have like yeah and i have to also acknowledge it's not that i chased you and said <laughs> 10 years back that listen let's do the story but like now because somewhere you proven and that proving has taken a long time so what kept us going was the fact that we did not see the sector losing its potential just because the market isn't responding or just because we are not able to drive the traction in the way we are able to drive wanted to drive and we were i would say privileged that we were able to survive that focus of wanting to build technology was something that never went away long term value uh, is always more essential it's in fact one of our values which is stay the distance it's one of our values in idea forge because we literally believe that do the right thing for the long distance we couldn't be sitting and having this conversation because yeah. i can just imagine you know and like matlab ye bahut kathin journey hai this is a very it's tough, a very tough journey yes and, uh, you have to convince yourself that you are doing something right for a lot of times the war is with your own mind it is not necessarily with anybody else yes. because what anybody else says uh, impacts your mind yes. not uh, and your mind then gets on to the path of either self destruction or uh, you know continue to stay the path that is easy and then controlling your mind is very critical all the embarrassment emanates from our mind it does not emanate from what the world does to you in fact i'll credit a, credit a bit of this to my family as well right so uh, my dad once i started doing this would keep telling me that ankit please remember only paranoid survive <laughs> uh, or whatever and and to to detect any of that 
you have to reflect right you have to give yourself time and i want to give a lot of credit to the team ye ipo did you envisage that you will have such a good outcome with the ipo no and why did you decide to do it in june like as in get listed we wanted to raise or wanted to capitalize ourselves so that we can build the right set of products technologies for the next phase of growth of this this industry right it's at an inflection point it's seeing literally an explosion right now are we doing the right things as a business or not is very critical right so that was the uh, that was the motivation right ki we need to raise more capital and there aren't large pools of private capital available that will invest behind defense uh, as a story right most of the private capital like i mentioned to you at least prior to the war or prior to i would say many uh, you know the explosion of the industry mm. itself was not even willing to back anything that has to do with uh, defense homeland security or yeah. government businesses as yeah. well now things are changing but that was the reality and in some way i also want to call out that you your uh, milestone the cipo milestone and the way you built the business also in many ways opens a story and a reference for a lot more startups to say dekho kar sakte hain defense mein government ke sath aur ye yeah. bana sakte hain acche se that also is something which i would credit to the trail blazers that we have had on board so uh, prior to us going public as a you know cus- with with a lot of our customers being defense oriented we had companies like data patterns mtar a lot of them go public and those companies were taken public by uh, florin tree capital which is matthew seriax company so the other investor who came and uh, literally uh, sort of came in at the right time was matthew when he joined us Uh, and invested in idea for via florin tree he came with that background because he took data pattern with mtar ah, mm. so we had that experience of what it takes and what is the right sort of thing to do to build enduring businesses in that space. you know talking to you i feel i'm uh, going through a book management book <laughs> how to build it the right way think the right way operate the right way and most importantly long term अगर इफ़ यू हैव टू लुक बैक एक दो चीज़ जिसकी वजह से यू थिंक दैट द स्टॉक मार्केट विच अगेन आई से इज़ वेरी वेरी इट्स नॉट लाइक द प्राइवेट मार्केट इट इज़ वेरी ओपन एंड वेरी क्रिटिकल एंड ऑनेस्ट वॉट डू थिंक वर्क वेन आई गॉट द फर्स्ट सिग्नल ऑफ लुकिंग एट द पॉसिबिलिटी ऑफ द जनरल पब्लिक अप्रिशिएटिंग आर स्टॉक सो इन ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वन अर्ली वी अनाउंसड the uh, win of one of our opportunities that we backed from the government of india so we did that for the first time and the response we received made me feel particularly that kahin na kahin ek underlying sentiment open up hua hai mm. uh, you know and everyone reported that victory and uska jo reaction tha social media pe otherwise i it made me feel like ki it is connecting uh, with people It was like a moment people were waiting for, kind of. A, yeah. So that sort of gave me a little bit of a flavor that it may not be a poor idea to think yeah. about this because there is a little bit of love yeah. for this kind of a story. And then our story, the fact that uh, we were uh, we were more than fifty percent of the market uh, in financial year twenty twenty two, and the fact that uh, we have built it with a lot of intellectual property and. we continue to do it in a way that will drive value to the end customer make them want to use our product and scale with our product we really really privileged to have that kind of uh, sub- support and public consciousness and probably also because we make profits in india like how do you see this space shaping up you know we are just starting the starting to scratch the surface right now we are inducting drones like probably when laptops were inducted are getting inducted ha huh. you look around this room itself you'll find that even if somebody is coming to office every day they're still working on a laptop only yeah so we are not even realizing how our life and how deep the penetration of this technology will be when it is fully uh, you know absorbed by the world like we are right now going after the most regular use cases use cases that are obviously scaling are obvious for 
deploying the technology. But as we saturate onto those users and they become mainstream and they go all the way down to their full depth, which they will, uh, we will see a lot more happening. We will see their use being done for uses that we have not even imagined even today. It is wild the kind of uses people are imagining with drones. So, I'm I'm actually very very excited about the future of the technology and eventually this technology will become like the infra technology Achha. which remains in the background. Mm-hmm. It doesn't maybe it won't get spoken of. Yeah. But it will be doing its job on a day to day basis silently. Yeah. Just like you have CCTVs uh, observing uh, everything and protecting us, you will have a layer of drone infra doing a lot of work for us but we won't even notice because it will become so common and mainstream and that's the future we are gunning for yeah that's the future we want to create and yeah we want to unlock the third dimension to that extent be it for carrying freight be it for doing uh, law enforcement operations be it for doing mapping inspection operations to ensure that infra is healthy infra is monitored and people are safe and the ecology is safe by reducing the dependence on ground infra which needs us to build a lot of physical infra for us to move and enable mobility what would you like to tell a lot of entrepreneurs who are building uh, so i thought it dejected hote hain koi khush hai magar mostly again ki hard hai i'm again coming back ki hardware hard hai abhi bhi to unko kya kahenge what will you say if people believe in the potential of what they are doing and if the world or the ecosystem is to yet to catch up to its importance or relevance if you can survive doing it uh, keep doing it keep showcasing the uh, value of uh, what you built because there will definitely come an inflection point where what you believe will uh, become mainstream and if you are ready building technology while doing it you are able to survive while doing it you are able to build deep value you will have the first rights to you know that uh, growth when it happens yeah i am seeing 50% 60% of the journey has required you to be like that abhi ipo se to paisa bana hoga usse kaise life change hua hai at least personally i have we, we obviously did not uh, take anything out of it, you know, and uh, Like I said, we've never given ourselves too much of a luxury to think about the lifestyle. Co uh, hmm. change karna. And the business was doing well enough earlier as well that we were okay. And we've never aspired to be like flamboyant or flashy in that sense. At least the team that I have hasn't like really uh, lived with that as an outcome in mind. you would rather there are drones are flamboyant than we are <laughs> <laughs> see that's why i told you you have lot of that that journey in itself is very for the lack of better word i would use very flamboyant in a deeply <laughs> deeply yeah, uh, enriching way ankit i wanted to ask you is that you know again from 2007 to 15 you operated in a sort of constrained manner which uh, most entrepreneurs jo kehte na bootstrap hai technically aur uh, kam paise mein doing something you know this deep tech i want to understand is constraint mindset se one or two advantage advantages muscle that you built because somewhere we need to also talk about that and if you can share because it will help a lot of entrepreneurs yeah like i said <clears throat> when you do not have capital that is externally helping you build what you want to build you have to earn enough money from what you are building today right so yeah. you have to sell it at a price at which you can sustain that element of your journey which is going to add value in the long term and our focus was that we genuinely need to earn enough from what we are selling that we can build better technology mm. because one thing consistent we felt was the intrinsic value of the business is going to get built if we are focused on intellectual property everything else is going to be uh, you know ephemeral in that one sense because uh, you know orders will come mm. will will have their own cycle uh, you know anything else that we do people or any other perk that we may get is all going to be ephemeral ephemeral and it will come and go success of a product will come and go 
but the core technology that you're building to build it that's going to stay with you and that's going to have a larger impact over a long period of time so focusing on the heart of what's going to be valuable for the business in the long term was something which i believe really helped us over the years at least we were at every point in time in the journey able to say that we are building one of the best performing drones in the world one thing again i'm picking up you said that you you were not you guys didn't build it ki ye karna hai ye milestone hai ipo hai fir this is a business for life that you're building are we going to see you stay put please uh, that's that's where we are at this point in time there's no reason to not continue because there's so much more to it right i mean we've just started to scratch the surface of wanting to build larger systems we just sort of as a strategy suggested that we are going to make drones that will carry 100 plus kgs to 100 plus kilometers wow like we're just starting to build and like create those kind of drones that we wanted to build from the day we started yeah so i think abhi to kafi kuch abhi to party shuru hai abhi to party shuru hai ऑल्सो बिकॉज यू बीन in this space you're an iit and then you know the journey around and uh, and that is what we need to celebrate and and, and 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 lot of respect for what you guys have built thank you